Hey everyone, Sheldon here, and welcome to part 2 of How to Make Your Hardened Paper Kunai. In this video, we're going to drill the hole for the small diameter of the handle, and we are also going to glue some template layers onto the kunai shape. To create this hole, I'm going to be using this drill right here. It is 1 fourth of an inch in diameter, or 0 0.250, and it is 6.35 millimeters in diameter. So, this is the biggest one I have on here. You can see the area that needs to be cut out right here. It's represented by these dashed lines right there. Those are called hidden lines, and you're not technically supposed to dimension anything off of hidden lines, which is why I created a separate section view to show these dimensions. So basically what a section view does is you imagine you cut an object in a certain direction and you are able to see the inside and some of the measurements that you wouldn't be able to see using an outside view. So this is the main front view right here as you probably remember and if you turn it just like this, this is what it's going to look like of course after you cut all of these edges down and make it look like it should. For this section view right here, this is only the front part of the kunai, so it's excluding the handle. So this view that you see right here would be the view that this would be if I took it like this and turned it just like that. But we can't do that until they are all glued together, but this is basically what it's going to look like because this is going to be cut from the center and meet up with the center right there, so that whole part will be basically cut off. So basically this line represents a knife, sort of. You imagine that you cut along that line and the arrows are pointing in the direction of the face that you will see. So if you took a knife and cut this in half, you're going to see this side right here. You're going to see this area right there, which is what is showing right here. So that's basically what this is. So this is showing that this is three inches going in, so the hole is three inches deep, and on metric that converts to 7.62 centimeters. So the depth on both of these blueprints is indicated, and also the diameter of the drill we're going to be using. So you can cut this image out right here if you want to and glue it onto one of these, but that's not really necessary because we can just connect these hidden lines. This is meant for reference. So drilling into paper this direction can be a little bit challenging because sometimes the paper can split and we don't want that. So basically we're going to cut a groove out of some of these first and that will mean there is less paper material for the drill to go through. So that's a smaller chance of everything splitting. So if you think about it, if we cut a groove out of a few of these pieces, the ones that are going to be in the middle, it's going to be a rectangular groove. It won't be a circle like a drill. So we need to figure out how big of a rectangular groove we can cut out and still be able to put the drill in there and change it into a circular hole. So if we cut a square groove out of these pieces right here and made it just the size that it shows right there, you're going to have a square that is 0 0.250 by 0 0.250. So I'm drawing a circle in here and this will represent the thin part of the handle that will go inside the front section of the kunai right there. The circle, even though the diameter of the circle would be 0 0.250, would not fit perfectly in a square that's 0 0.250 by 0 0.250. You have these empty corners here that doesn't have any material, which means everything would be a little bit weaker. So this is what we are going to do. You can see there's a square inside of a circle instead of a circle inside of a square. Now, the square here represents the groove that we need to cut out to reach this diameter of a circle. So basically the biggest square that can fit inside of this circle. So basically the square shape right here is the material we would remove by cutting out a groove that is smaller than the diameter we need. The diameter we need is 0 0.250. So the square is what we cut out with the knife and the rest of the circle you see here around the edges is taken out by the drill. So basically I got this big number here and I just rounded it to 0.177 inches. 
and that is 0.44958 centimeters. So obviously you would round that as well, but as you can see, this is the biggest square that can fit inside of this circle. So that is how big the groove needs to be that we are going to cut out of here. So I just drew two solid lines. As you can see, they are next to the dashed lines, which are called hidden lines. And that is the size of the groove we need to cut out. So now we need to figure out how many of these we need to cut the groove out of. So you probably remember 16 layers is about 70 thousandths of an inch. So 70 thousandths of an inch is pretty close to 2 millimeters. So I'll just write that on there as well. So basically we're just figuring out how many of these we need. So this is what we're going to have to do is see how many times 70 thousandths of an inch goes into 0 0.177. And I'm getting 2.528 and it just, you know, pretty long number, but we don't really need it to be that accurate. So that means we need to cut the groove out of two and a half 16 layer pieces. We know we have 17 pieces in all right here, so to keep everything centered, I'm going to cut one groove completely out of one of these and then just a little bit off of each one of these. So I'm just going to cut this groove out really quick. Now that's cut out, so you just use a little bit of super glue on the inside just to keep all of these layers together. And compress the layers just like we usually do. So this is what it looks like with the groove and we need 2.5 pieces that have a groove cut just like this. So that would mean two of these would be cut all the way through just like that and then you would cut a little bit out of one of these, but we're actually going to do it a little bit differently because if we did it like that, it wouldn't be centered. So you can just estimate for this part, basically the second groove that you drew on there, instead of cutting all the way through the entire piece just like this, you just cut through it a little bit and then peel off some paper material. You can see how it's peeling off of here just like that, and you only have to cut through about three-fourths of the way. So the groove should look something like this, right there. As you can see, it's not going all the way through. And if you line them up, they should line up perfectly. So one more should give me the right thickness. So now there is a groove in all three of these pieces here. It goes all the way through this one, and almost all the way through these two. It's kind of hard to tell, but you can see there's a little step right there. So these three pieces are going to be in the middle of the front section right here, as you can see. And this one will go between these two, so it will look something like this. And it creates the right size square shaped hole that we need to eventually drill this all the way through. Now we can glue these three pieces together, and I recommend putting a little bit of super glue inside all three of these grooves because that will just make the drilling process easier. I'm just using normal Elmer's glue all for this part, as you can see, and I'm just going to spread this around just like this. And then I'm going to take this piece right here and put it over it just like that make sure everything is lined up properly. And then you do the exact same thing for the other side, just make sure the groove is facing the inside so it will create this square shaped hole. After you glue all three of those pieces together, make sure you use a little bit of super glue around all of these edges and then compress the layers together. So you can see the square hole right there, and we need to make it a circular hole. So to do that, we're going to be using this drill size right here. And remember, it's 1 fourth of an inch, or 0 0.250 in diameter, or 6.35 millimeters. The only problem is, the diameter of this is slightly bigger than the thickness of this right now. So we actually need to glue two more pieces on both sides just like this, and then it will be a little bit thicker. So I'm doing the exact same thing, 
just spreading the glue around on here and gluing the piece on. So now those pieces are glued together and this is very very solid. It's pretty much like a thick piece of wood right now. So I started drilling this hole just a little bit just to see how well it would work and as you can see it took off a little bit of paper material which shows me that this is going to work perfectly. Since these middle pieces are glued together right now we should have 12 pieces left over so we can put six pieces on each side. So just find six of them and glue them together. It's pretty much the same thing we did with this, but it doesn't have the groove in there. All right, there's one of them. Now I just gotta do the other. All right, so there's the other one, and now I have three separate parts right here. I have the bottom piece, the middle piece, which has the hole right there, so that would go there, and then the top piece, which goes here. So all of these put together, form one thick piece. So now we can glue these pieces together and then we can finish drilling the hole using the correct size drill. And remember, the one that has the hole goes in the middle, so between these other two thick pieces. So I have the middle piece and the side piece glued together and now I just need to glue this side piece on. Alright, so now they are all glued together and this is extremely dense and surprisingly heavy. I might use this as a paperweight. <laughs> it's pretty ironic. So now we're going to drill this hole. So I recommend using some clamps like this because I am actually going to be using a power drill for this part because it's so thick you actually can. And one last C-clamp in the middle just to keep it all together. So you probably remember that the hole is three inches deep. So all you need to do is put the drill next to it just like this and take a piece of tape or something like that and put the piece of tape at the three inch mark right there and wrap it around. And you basically put it in until the end of the tape lines up with the end of the drill. So, just like that. So now it should go in exactly three inches, and it should do that anyway because the groove is cut in there. So now we're actually going to drill a hole, so just make sure everything is extremely steady. You don't want this flying around like that because you know, that's pretty dangerous. The groove right there should keep everything nice and straight, so nothing should go off center. It should stay on one steady path. So now we have paper dust everywhere, and yeah, that's pretty hot. Be careful, this can get pretty hot. Wow, it worked out perfectly. So usually what I do after I drill a hole is I take some super glue, and put it inside of that hole and take something like a dowel or a q-tip and make sure it covers the entire surface inside and then drill through it one more time after the super glue dries all right so now we should have the correct diameter hole right there as you can see and it's a perfect circle which is obviously a good sign so now we need to take some super glue and some baking soda right here and fill up the middle section on all of these sides so only this middle part right there because that is eventually going to be the edge that is exposed you can see it on the blueprint right there that is the edge that is going to be exposed so I have the super glue right here and as you can see the surface is very rough you have a few low spots here and there but we only really need to worry about the middle section so all you need to do is apply some super glue in the low spots just like that and then you can take your baking soda and sprinkle it over it just like that and this creates kind of an epoxy type mixture that you can file and sand into a nice even smooth shape after all of the low spots in the middle section here are filled up I recommend waiting about five minutes for everything to completely solidify. And then after you've waited about five minutes, 
take something like a file or some sandpaper, preferably a file because it's flat like this and it will be easy to get a nice flat even surface. So you just do a little bit of filing like this. And then you can change the size of the file to a smaller one. You can use pretty much any size file you want. Alright, so I used a file on pretty much the entire surface area of this kunai, and I even used a little bit of JB Weld on this side, but it's really not necessary. I also added a few layers of paper to these two faces of the kunai, and that isn't necessary. I just did that to kind of change the angle of this a little bit. It really depends on how you want your paper kunai to look, whether you're getting it from a game or from a show or something like that. By the way, the time has caught up to these tutorial videos, which means I am able to use the new camera and the new microphone, so I'm going to switch over to those right now. Okay, that was probably a pretty lame transition. So right now I'm using all of the upgraded equipment, so it is really nice. All right, so I have these triangular cutouts right here, as you can see, and basically I'm just going to glue these to the side of the kunai, just like this, and then I will be able to tell how much I need to cut off. So basically I just measured from here to the end right here, and that is how long this strip needs to be. Unfortunately, you can't just use the right side view for these triangular shapes. You actually need to measure this length right here because the right side view looks like this and this will actually show up slightly shorter because it is an orthographic drawing. I have one of the short triangular pieces glued right here which shows how much needs to be cut off the top and the bottom. This is what one of the triangular pieces would look like and these two lines right here would actually meet up at an imaginary point, but since we want this to be a flat face, they won't physically meet up. Just like these triangles right here, I just measured the length of this area and drew out the necessary shape, and this will be glued just like that. So I'm going to glue these triangular shapes onto all of these faces, and I don't actually need three of these large triangles, but I just have one extra just in case I mess up. I'm just gonna use this glue because these triangular shapes are just gonna get cut down anyway. All right, so all of the template layers are glued on there, as you can see. So now I know where I need to cut and how much material to remove. Just so you guys know, we are actually going to make two cuts on this entire kunai. So the first cut is this angle right here, all sloping down just like that. And then after that, it's going to be cut down this direction, which will actually give it that final kunai shape. 